Hello everyone, I am Alexis Yoko or Alexander and in this video I'll be discussing more about Shinigamis. Last time I talked about my theories on who is Undertaker. Now I'm gonna talk about who was Undertaker before becoming a Shinigami and what possibly happened to him, he and the other English Shinigamis, because these are the ones we have more material about. Now before starting I have to remind you that in Black Butler humans who killed themselves became Shinigamis as a punishment, and the fact that most Shinigamis are men shows a sad reality about the male suicide rates, even today. Now to the analysis. Let's start with Ronald. Ronald seems to use his age and inexperience as an excuse sometimes. Even if he's doing his job, he still wants to run away from responsibility in some situations. Like, look at me, I'm young, I don't know what to do. I'll go back to the way Ronald talks about himself in a moment. Ronald's inexperience also shows during fights. Undertaker calls him still green for relying on his eyes, and also after Ronald said he won't be defeated by an old guy like Undertaker. He gets beaten up right after underestimating his opponents. Grell called him a brat, though he's not exactly a brat. He seems like a young adult to me. But after Shinigami standards, Ronald is still very green. Maybe that's a stretch, but I might add that this character in general seems very 1920s to me. Not necessarily his clothes or something like that, but his whole character reminds me of a bright young thing. Yes, I know Black Butler takes place in the 1880s, but hear me out. Yana also added other 1920s elements in her manga, so probably making Ronald seem more modern was on purpose, to emphasize that he is very young, even for a human. He also reminds me a lot of Harold Lloyd. You should watch his movies. Ronald is usually a cheerful guy who makes plans and wants to live well, his afterlife. Which makes me wonder, what happened to the poor man? Why is he a Shinigami? Well, it's possible that Ronald killed himself as an impulsive reaction. We don't know what his reason was, maybe something really horrible happened to him. And it seems to me like Ronald felt helpless and unable to support himself. Like a young person that doesn't know what to do. I guess this self-irony is not just a harmless joke. Ronald still feels like a helpless kid sometimes, especially with more experienced co-workers around. And his impulsive decisions are like, okay, I've had enough of being a helpless kid, now I'm taking action. This is very sad when you think about it, but at the same time I'm glad there's character development and we can see Ronald taking more responsibility, even though he still has things to learn. Now William. As we know, William is a man that doesn't let emotions impact his work, He's always very serious and also always very stressed. William hates doing overtime, gets very aggressive very quickly, wakes up at the tiniest noise. When Sebastian threw Grell's sight at William, he didn't even turn around, still he caught it. Also Sebastian threw it very quickly, he's a demon after all. William's brain is always in alert. To me it seems like this man is dealing with huge amounts of stress that never leave him. Which makes me think that William's previous life was just as stressful, if not more stressful, than his afterlife. He just collapsed. He was desperate to escape by any means possible. And now, William desperately tries to seem as cold and serious as he can, to at least give the impression that he can keep himself together. If Ronald learns things and grows as a character, for William the afterlife is more like another hell he's going through. Next is Grell. Now I'm gonna be talking about another sensitive topic knowing that Grell is a transgender woman that lives in times when basic human rights weren't taken seriously and they had rudimentary medicine. We still know very little about what's going on in people's brains now, imagine how it was back then, in the Victorian era or even way before that, because we don't know exactly when Grell died. We don't know exactly if Grell killed herself because she couldn't bear to live in the wrong life anymore because of the discrimination because nobody took her seriously, or if she had other reasons. It seems to me like all of this piled up, and it wasn't just one reason. I did notice that Grell said and did some things that indicate she was a poor woman in her previous life. She told Ronald not to complain about such little things as overtime. She told Totello that she doesn't eat much. She also tried to get in the mood to say so with Ronald, but then she said she can't do this with a brat like him. Like, I tried working with what I have. Working with what you have is something you have to learn in order to survive as a poor person. Working as a Shinigami, girl sure has more money to buy herself nice things and make manicure appointments now 
but she still has the habit of working with what she has. She fixed Madame Red's jacket herself instead of going to a tailor. I mean this jacket doesn't look like a tailor fixed it. Also Grail seems to be very preoccupied though with her appearance, can get theatrical sometimes and is pretty much of a pervert. <laughs> Which may mean 1. She was a prostitute before. Or 2. She was an actress that had a reputation of being slutty. And maybe that's why she finds hard to get men attractive. They're a challenge for her. Although, something's very interesting here. Side note. Girl says a lot how William's sadistic side turns her on, right in front of William. And what William does? Keeps being sadistic with Grail, as she likes. I mean, he's a very stressed man. It wouldn't be weird to think that he would benefit from some intimacy with Grail. But if this is happening, I don't think he's proud of it. Come on, William, do what makes you feel good. There's nothing wrong with it. Side note over. Grail gets angry when Otello ignores her, although she's not interested in him either. I guess in this case, she just wants to say she put her hands on Otello, that she can have him, and that in itself will be a win for her. Talking about this pervert reputation Grail still has. Probably one of the reasons Grail killed herself, other than the ones I already mentioned, is that she thought she will never be able to have a family, due to this reputation. Because yeah, she is slutty, she likes to sleep around and play around, but she also wanted a family. Prostitutes or people considered slutty are not really seen as someone whom you can make a family with even today. And I don't agree with it. But this is how a lot of people thought and still think today. Grell knew she wasn't able to get pregnant herself, as she stated she would prefer, but I'm pretty sure she wanted a family anyway. And this regret still follows her in the afterlife. Not to mention that Grell is definitely very unstable emotionally, which may be a result of the abuse she more than likely experienced in her previous life. Now, things get more complicated, as I'll be talking about Otello. What we know about Otello is that he is working at the forensics department and is very passionate about his work. He seems to see it as a hobby rather than a job, as he said he doesn't take things seriously. Otello also has a playful attitude in general. Sometimes he gets freaky, we're going back to that in a moment. Some fans made a parallel between Shakespeare's Otello and Yana's Otello, theorizing that the Shinigami Otello probably killed his wife out of jealousy and then he killed himself. It's possible that there's an inspiration, but I guess it's a bit far-fetched to say he was doing the exact same thing as Shakespeare's Otello. He's a different character with a different story. We know nothing about his previous life yet. We can only analyze how he behaves now and see if we can get to any conclusions. Let's get back to the fact that Otello is freaky. Naughty, if you will. We know that most of the time, when a character acts freaky in Black Butler, they have some messed up things to hide. Otello also acts a bit childish. He's all cute and innocent, cinnamon bun boy, until he gives you this look and then starts saying messed up things. Even Undertaker confirmed that Otello is pretty messed up in the head. And if Undertaker says this, I guess we should take it seriously. I guess Otello legit has some serious mental problems. Look at Otello's face when Undertaker pointed out that he's not in the position to call him insane. He's the one who's called out now and he doesn't seem to like it. Otello is aware of his dark side and tries to control it. Maybe that's why he tries not to take his job too seriously and fills his time with inventing useless things such as a machine that helps him exercise without moving rather than dissecting people. So I don't think Otello word for word killed his wife and then killed himself but probably he got carried away did bad if not horrible things to others, and when he realized what he did, he felt horrible and killed himself. Maybe you're gonna say, but Otello can't even throw a sight properly, how could he overpower those people in the first place? I don't think he needed to. Overpowering people in a fight is one thing and harming them is another thing. Just look at Otello's eyes when he threw his sight at Undertaker. If he can get this uncontrollable, everything's possible. He also talks a lot about disciplining bad children. So maybe the people he hurt or even killed were children. I know none of us want to look at Otello in that way, but this can be a possibility. After all, most Black Butler characters have a really messed up side, even if they're good people. Now let's get even more complicated, as it's Undertaker's turn. Undertaker is a former Shinigami that deserted from the Shinigami Dispatch and returned to the human world. We don't know much about him, as he was and still is a very secretive man. What we know for sure is that Undertaker is not in his right mind. He made experiments with bringing back the dead, and he has a very close relationship with the Phantom High family. 
Undertaker tries to protect our seal at all costs. Literally at all costs. At first, he may appear as a harmless man that's a bit loopy, but in fact, going to such lengths as far as even killing many people, including children, indicates a despair that sister with insanity. Now, Undertaker didn't completely lose his mind. He's perfectly aware of what he's doing. But he became so desperate that he doesn't see anything else anymore. He can't even see the harm he does in order to achieve his goal. Our seal's twin brother, the real seal, was resurrected by Undertaker. Vincent, their father, died when he was just 34. Claudia, their grandmother, also died young, at 36. Undertaker was there at least since Claudia's generation. And there's this very popular theory about Undertaker being Claudia's secret lover. If you didn't watch my previous video about this theory, go check it out, please. However, it's not confirmed if they were lovers or not, but what we know for sure is that Claudia was very special for Undertaker, as well as Vincent and the other people from his morning lockets. It's like he lost everyone he cared about. We don't know where it all started, we don't know how Undertaker's previous life was. Maybe he lost the people he cared about in this life too. Maybe he tried to bring them back with what methods could he possibly think about before becoming a Shinigami. To me it seems like Undertaker wants to laugh a lot because he knows he's slowly losing his mind. And laughter is a good medicine, isn't it? Talking about medicine, I do believe that Undertaker was a doctor in his previous life. He knows a lot about medicine, is very curious about studying people, made very complex experiments, called Ryan out for using a medical method he doesn't understand. Undertaker keeps almost everything about himself secret, not even Otello knows his real name. It's like he became very paranoid, therefore very secretive. He also will do literally anything, no matter how crazy, if that means he and his loved ones are safe. It's very obvious that Undertaker is a very intelligent man. He can learn a lot, he is very adaptable, he knows how to manipulate people, he has great fight strategies, but he is also a very emotional man. And I guess at some point, regardless of his secretive nature, Undertaker will reveal more to our seal. And I'm pretty sure his past is way more interesting than any of us may theorize. For now, this is my analysis, these are my theories. Tell me what you think in the comments and thank you for watching.